Hey guys, what's up? Today I have yet another deck brew of mine that got from D5 to Legend based on stats. But before I discuss the deck, let me tell you about this mini chart in my thumbnail. So as you can see here, I've got columns for win rate, number of games, and time in hours. So I've come up with a formula to get these answers and just plugged in these numbers on the thumbnail. So how I did this was I started with 51% because 51% is the bare minimum win rate you need to be climbing on ladder. Because if you're at 50% or lower, well, if you're at 50%, obviously you just win a game, then lose a game back and forth. So you don't really climb that way. Gets you nowhere. So yeah, at a 51% win rate, you'd have to play 800 games and have a record of 408 wins and 392 losses. So 408 out of 800, that's equal to 51%. So for the number of hours, I just put a range of 7 to 15 minutes per game. This is just an estimate. But I think on average, that's the time frame most people play a single game of Hearthstone. Unless you're playing Control all the way, I'd have a different computation for that. But yeah, 7 to 15 seems pretty realistic, I guess. Yeah, so I've computed for the higher possible win rates and the corresponding number of games and Rs for, to get the Legend. So 55%, you have it here. Then 58, 60, you see the number of games needed and the time in hours to complete this. Time in hours is equal to your gameplay. So yeah, it doesn't account for, of course, queue time or playing another game, obviously. <laughs> or playing Hearthstone but not ranked, you know. But anyway, so yeah, the number of hours or the time needed significantly decreases if your win rate is high enough as you go higher, alright? So my formula is based on the assumption that you aren't playing on an 11 star multiplier, meaning whenever you win, you just rank one star up, alright? So yeah, and as you can see here, finally, there's a 90% win rate here. That's actually 18-2. It'll take you about 2-5 to five hours to do if you're this good. This is just the third highest possible score. So you've got 17-1 and you've got 16-0. But I didn't include it here because, yeah, let's be realistic. This is really, really hard to do. But I could add it if you guys would like. I'd add it next time. So yeah, who who knows? We may find a deck that would actually have 17-1 or 16-0 in the future. Alright, so I think that's it for the thumbnail. Let's go to the deck. So this is actually my brew. And it's just your regular broom paladin. You've got flingers, you've got broomstick. But what did I include that's kind of making it brewy, I guess? Would be Yogg-Saron. And Snack Run, nobody really plays Snack Run. I think the few decks that play this are playing Big Paladin, but I don't play Big Paladin. And I have a one-off Wild Pyromancer as well. So I kind of, how do I put this? Put a lot of one-offs like Red Scale, Dr Dragon Tamer. A lot of people put two. But what's the reasoning behind this? I don't know. It For me, it's just some sort of balance. Like if I play... Two of Snack Run, it might not be that good. Th that's just the reasoning behind it. I guess it all boils down to how I play the deck and the luck that comes with playing the deck. Because Yogg Saron is a high roll card. Again, um, I've tried this, then I removed it because I said it's too high roll -y. Now I put it back. But the reasoning for this is I think Yogg Saron is great because you only play it when you're behind. And the only role you don't like when you're behind is Rod of Roasting, which is the 5% outcome, right? All the rest you would want if you're behind. Like, if your opponent has a full board, you'd like Zero to Cast spells or you'd like to steal 3. 
or you like to destroy all of them and get their stats, which happens more often than you think. Well, all the rest happen equally, except for the 5% Rod of Roasting. So yeah, I think Yogg's Run is pretty great, and it's so easy to pull this off because you're playing Librum and you're playing Lady Lealdren, you just keep bouncing them back. And it's really good, I only have one solid spread as well because yeah, if I put two, I need to put in the other card draws like Novice Engineer or Loot Hoarder. And I feel they take away some space for win conditions or removal. Like, I think most Broom Paladins don't have Consecration, but I put in two. So yeah, uh, this probably fills in the spot of the card draw. So the weakness of this deck is card draw, I guess, because... The other lists really draw into your deck and really draw into your flingers really quickly. But this is kind of slower, more mid-range to late game type. And I hope you enjoy. So I actually, I actually enjoy this deck and I hope you guys could check it out. So yeah, thank you and let's see the gameplay. Alright, so I'm actually one win away from Legend, so this is 22-7. If I win this game, it's like getting Legend all over again. So again, I'm on low Legend, but that's life, right? I'm also wondering, with win rates such as this, why I'm in low Legend, but I guess I have to play 24-7 with a good record. If I want to keep up and try to get a high legend, so maybe I should focus more on that. But anyway, against Warlock, it's a 4-1. It's usually Tikatus Warlock, so I have to try and apply pressure. Alright. This is not bad, though of course we want Alder Attendant or First Day of School. Uh, no use coining into red scale dragon tamer. I'd rather coin it to the alder on turn 4. If this permits me, if this game permits me to do that. Alright. So we want to play on curve, unfortunately this isn't the best hand we could have, but... Wow, Twisted Knowledge. This must be some sort of control warlock that I don't know about. Oh man, this is quite bad. But keeping Alder Truth Seeker is always good, like I said a while ago. On the opening hand, unless you're really sure you're against hyper aggro, otherwise, I'd keep Alder Truth Seeker all the time. Philosophy, wow, Mo probably Ticketus, right? Yeah, I hope uh, the opponent doesn't keep on clearing. We'd want to apply some pressure here. Alright. I would think this copied Dicapus. So let's just hope it doesn't get corrupted too early. 
Wow. Okay. Keeps on clearing, huh? All right. Used it for Spirit Jailer instead. At one point, uh, I think it would be impossible to keep clearing the board. And I'd be able to apply pressure somewhat. Oh wow. This is quite unfortunate. It's actually an option for me. I don't know if this is wrong or right, but I really want to apply pressure now. Because who knows, I, I don't know what deck this is, so... It's dangerous, like, if the opponent has Alex Traza or something, and I missed out on 8. 8 heal by playing Librem of Hope too early. Okay, we're still fine here. I think I just go face all the way. Oh wow, uh, I, I'm thinking Ticket this next turn is a possibility. Okay, at least I got this, but... Man, what do I do here? Uh, probably just this, then Amber Watcher is fine. I'm thinking Ticketus is... This is the Ticketus turn. So what do I want? Don't want to get milled. There we go. Wow, it's a 9-9. And it milled my second Librem of Hope, which is bad. So if the opponent gets Yasuraj next turn, that's pretty bad, but Cascading Disaster hasn't been played. So I'm thinking if I should wait. Now Liadrin doesn't do anything. But the opponent would be forced to clear, is that nah let's just pass the turn. So we might see an attack on the Amber Watcher, it depends. Wow. Well, it was discovered, so... I think I save on the Librem first. I don't know. Ah, Snack Run's pretty good. Anything crazy here? I'll just subdue. Is this still winnable? Okay. So Yogg-Saron isn't quite triggered yet. Then again, we only play this when we're really really behind, so I think I still have time to pump this, especially if I get Librem of Wisdom. And this is 3 spells here, so if I just get Librem of Wisdom, this would be easily activated in a few turns. Let's just hope I survive though. Oh, 
Oh wow. And we're gonna see the strongmans. And of course, look at this. Oh man, it got the consecration number two. Okay, at least it didn't get the flinger. Alright, so can I win this? I think this is winnable. Just go for this. Was fortunate that there was no cascading disaster. Okay, let's hope the opponent doesn't heal or something. But it's unfortunate that the Libra of Wisdoms are gone, so the Augs are on is impossible right now. If if the opponent heals, I'm just dead. Oh what? Wow. Wow, this is this is tough. Well, sending out a prayer here. Please no more cascading disaster and I could win this, hopefully. Oh wait, Le um, Yogg's are still possible because of Lady Liadrin. There we go. That's nice. Okay, so he's sending out a prayer here. Do I still win? And we got to Legend once again. This is a 23-7 after this game, so it's pretty cool. And yeah, it is possible to get to Legend from D5. So I've done it. This is the third time I'm technically doing it this season, this month. And you guys could do it too. So check this deck out. I think it's legit. 27 is not bad at all and I hope you guys enjoy this video if you do like the video or if you have any comments Just put them down below and please subscribe and I'll see you again next time